Welcome to the Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast, where we explore the ins and outs of building a successful career in the tech industry. My name is Rem, your Kuya Dev, and I'm excited to have you join me for this episode. Whether you're just starting out, looking to shift careers into tech, or hoping to grow more as a tech professional, this podcast is for you. Thank you for tuning in, and together, let's enjoy the episode. In the past few months, the tech industry has been ridden by very gloomy news. And I know a lot of you already know this, but for those who have been living under a rock, let me inform you of what's been happening. So a lot of I'm going to say here is not expert opinion, and it's not really, you, you can't really take it as fact, like take it with a grain of salt, because this is just what I'm, what, what, what I've observed about what's happening. And uh, things that I've read and heard from other people. So what I think happened was during the COVID pandemic, there was a gold rush for businesses to go online. And big tech wanted to take advantage of that. So they hired a lot of engineers, a lot of tech professionals without even thinking about where to put this talent. Kumbaga, hinire nila without even thinking kung saan nila ilalagay. Then, eto na. We are going back to normalcy. Now they are left with a lot of surplus in tech professional talent. So, ang dami nila ngayong empleyado, di ba? Tapos wala silang paglalagyan. Couple that with the looming danger of a global recession. It's not happened yet, or maybe it has, I don't know. But the danger is there. Even my current company is preparing for the eventual onset of the global recession. I hope it won't happen, but people are saying that it's going to happen. So, with a surplus of employees uh, and a looming global recession, big tech is now left with a decision to lay off people. So, sobra-sobra ka sa tao, tapos magkaka-recession pa, syempre, anong gagawin mo, di ba? So, towards the end of 2022, last year, and the beginning of this year, and it's still ongoing, the tech industry, led by the big tech like Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, they started waves of um, employee layoff. So, marami silang tinanggal. And it numbered in the tens of thousands. I don't have the total number now, but I would suspect parang siguro it had, it, it, in a hundred thousands na. So that's the current or, or that's the current uh, status now of uh, tech, the tech industry. Especially in the US and the, in Europe. So tayo, ikaw, ang tanong ngayon, tayo, apektado ba tayo? Should I be worried? Lalo na, let's, let's make it more specific. Should someone in the Philippines working for a tech company be worried about their jobs? Or, should someone who's trying to get into tech, for example, a fresh graduate or a career shifter, should they focus on other fields? Kumbaga, wag na muna sa tech, hanap na lang muna ako ng ibang trabaho na hindi related sa tech. Kasi baka pag nakapasok ako, I might just be another victim of the layoffs. These fears are 
valid. Valid na matakot ka. It is valid. I won't I won't sugarcoat um, what's been happening. But there are silver linings. And I've been um, asking people uh, on the inside, no? yung mga mangilang-ilang tao na kilala ko, na sa Pilipinas, hindi pa tayo gaano ka-apektado. Because maybe there's a lot of factors. Like for example, Amazon, they have, you know, they, ha- they have employees here, di ba? And Microsoft. But so far, we, ha- we aren't affected yet. And medyo misleading din kasi yung numbers eh. Although sabihin natin in yung yung numbers of layoffs, uh, na layoff na na employee is in the tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands. If you look at look at, look at it on a bigger scale, parang less than 10% lang siya ng workforce. Total workforce ng bawat company. So, hindi ganong kalaki in reality. Oo. Hundreds of thousands. Akatakot nga naman. It's, it's a solid number. But, in terms of percentage, konti lang sila. Around 10%. Don't quote me on that. There's, of course, I, I don't have the exact percentage. Pero, ang sinasabi is, ganun nga. Konti lang raw. Versus the whole tech, un- tech industry workforce. Lalo na sa ano yun, per company yun eh. Diba? Sa Amazon, parang sabi natin 10%, sa ano, 12%, mga ganun. Hindi ganun kalaki. Hindi lahat. And these people na madalas na, na natatanggal are mga ano na, mga seasoned professionals na yan. So pagka natanggal yan, may nakaabang na agad na Ibang company para songgabin sila. Uh, piesta ngayon sa LinkedIn, for sure. Yung mga, yung mga recruiter, nakaabang agad yan. So most likely, most likely, someone who has been kicked off Facebook would probably be, or would probably have a job two weeks, uh, maybe two weeks after, a month after. No? Kasi, malaki pa rin yung market. Lalo na sa mga mid-level senior engineers or mid-level senior professionals. Tayo naman sa Pilipinas, yun nga, wala tayo nababalita ng tatanggal eh. Parang wala pang layoffs dito. Wala pa. And most probably, and I'm hoping na ganito kayo mangyari, hindi siya mangyayari sa Pilipinas. Why? Because I think, sobrang mura natin para tanggalin. <laughs> di ba? It's uh, basic ano na lang. Basic economics na lang, di ba? Parang, for the amount of money that you're spending here in the Philippines, yung balik sa'yo, mas malaki, di ba? Parang mas malaki yung value na bin- binibigay natin. As opposed to someone who's in the US na earning, what, half a million 1 million per month, tapos all the perks. Mas mura tayo. Hindi dapat ganun. That's another story. But, ganun talaga. Of course, I'm speaking in general again kasi may mga Pilipino rin namang malaki ang sweldo, di ba? Hindi naman natin matatanggal yan. But, in general nga, mura tayo. No? On average. So, I don't think andun tayo sa top ng mga pwedeng tanggalin. Kasi, syempre, cost-cutting yan for a business, eh. Di ba? Aalisin mo yung mga mahal. Uunahin mo yung mga yan. And, uh, from what I'm uh, reading, and uh, from the news of other influencers ng, sa tech, yung mga iniidolo ko, parang, some of these companies, para kung magtanggal sila, sobrang random. Kumbaga, kahit performer ka, tatanggalin ka. And sa US naman, pagka tinanggal ka, protektado ka eh. Lalo na sa Europe. Pag natanggal ka doon, sobrang protektado ka. 
you will go against the laws of the country that you're in. Eh. So, malaki naman yung separation pay niyan. They can afford to not work for a very long time dahil dun sa separation pay. Sa Pilipinas, may ganun din, di ba? Di ka pwede-pwedeng basta, basta na lang tanggalin without, you know, proper cause and tawag dito, kung tatanggalin ka, may separation pay ka. Now, balik tayo sa ano, sa Philippine setting. Sa Philippine setting nga, oo, baka may, may danger, but ando tayo sa pinakabababa doon, sa listahan ng pwedeng tanggalin. Dahil nga, economically, mura tayo. And, yung recession, hindi pa, parang hindi pa umaabot dito. Hindi ko alam, ah. Uh, I'm not an economic expert. Although, nararamdaman natin yung yung spike ng ng inflation rate. But it's not that bad yet i know i know that's that's uh that might be coming from someone who's privileged you know i i i'm not feeling it yet i'm feeling it i'm feeling the 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 inflation rate but in terms of mga nawawala ng trabaho parang hindi pa nangyayari sa pilipinas and one thing naman sa recession Pagka tumama ang recession talaga, globally, kahit ano pang industry ka, hindi ka safe. So, sabihin natin nasa tech ka, hindi, dito na lang ako sa engineering or dito na lang ako sa nursing. Pag tumama ang recession na talagang sobrang bigat ng recession, lahat ng industry tatamaan. All, almost all. Siyempre, may mga industry na parang makikinabang eh. But, almost all would suffer so no job no all, all almost uh, almost all jobs are not safe tech man yan or engineering or nursing or medicine tatamaan lahat so the industry you're in is the least of your worries no, hindi, siya, hindi siya specific lang sa tech. I still hope that it won't happen. It, it, uh, that the recession won't really happen uh, in this year or even in the succeeding year. Sana kayanin natin. O kayanin ng global economy. Pero pagka hindi, yun nga, no one is safe. No. Except for a very, for very few uh, industries. No one will be safe. So, if you're a career shifter, wag mong isipin na pagka, you know, may looming recession, may mga layoffs because of the recession, wag mong isipin na matakot kang pumunt- mag- mag-shift into tech dahil lang doon. Dahil yung current na industry mo, baka tamaan din. So, yun, there's no really and there's no escaping that. No. Pero so far naman sa pagka nagaka-recession sa Pilipinas, parang pagka middle age earner ka, bihira kang tamaan eh. Ang madalas na tinatamaan talaga yung mga nasa laylayan eh. And it's unfortunate. Pero sila talaga yung madalas tamaan. Mga middle age, uh, middle age, middle uh, uh, middle wage uh, earners mas uh, safe. Uh, I-, I think ah uh, <laughs> from my non-expert opinion. <laughs> um, but that, that's what I see. Oh. And if you're a tech professional na, ganun din. Ganun din yung, yung, yung feeling na parang pag tinamaan yung industry ko, tinatamaan din yung iba. Diba? Sama-sama tayong lulubog. <laughs> Yun nga, sana hindi mangyari. But, what do we do para la ano? Ito na, para, ma, para may action points naman tayo, di ba? Kasi, iba rin yung lagi ka lang takot, iba yung may ginagawa ka para maibsan yung takot at makapag-prepare if ever na mangyari. So, to prepare, if you're, actually, kahit nasa ang industry ka ngayon, career shifter ka, or nasa tech industry ka na, or 
uh, you're a fresh graduate actually less less uh, less applicable to fresh graduate though but what i would suggest is ngayon pa lang mag-ipon na kayo wag niyo nang antayin mangyari yung mangyayari no wag na wag niyo nang antayin abutin kayo ng recession tapos saka kayo magkakandara pa maghanap ng pera i mean i know it's very hard na mag-ipon ng pera lalo na sa mga taong talagang malaki yung pangangailangan I understand that but you have to find a way no dapat nga ginawa nyo to during mat- nung, nung mataas pa yung ekonomiya yun, maganda pa yung ekonomi ng, 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 ng mundo before pandemic before the upcoming recession dapat na ihanda nyo na yung sarili nyo eh But short of that, the best time to start was yesterday. Huh? Yung nga sinabi ko. But the next best time to start is today. Don't start tomorrow. Start today. Simulan nyo na mag-ipon. I would suggest, simulan nyo sa, pag, ano, sa pag-account kung magkano yung gastos nyo araw-araw. Actually, monthly. Magkano yung ginagastos nyo monthly? Kasama nyo lahat yan, pati yung mga pangsine nyo. Ganon. Yung pang panggala, pang inom, pang dota. <laughs> Isama nyo lahat yan. Tapos itotal nyo. Then multiply it by 6. At least 6. Which means, kailangan may 6 months buffer kayo. So, that, you know, whatever happens, secured kayo. Nakaya nyong mabuhay for six months without a job. Wala kayong, no, wala kayong trabaho, you can still live the way you have been living. Ayun nga, mahirap siyang gawin para sa mga taong maraming gastusin. I understand that. So, in the exercise of listing down your expenses, your monthly expenses, you would see naman dun yung mga ka- pwede nyo tanggalin. Eh. ba? Diba? Pwede nyo muna isakripisyo. Huwag na muna mag-Netflix. Huwag na muna mag-Spotify. ba? Diba? Yung mga ganong malilit na bagay. Tanggalin nyo muna hanggang sa makaipon kayo. Dahan-dahan. Hindi kailangan biglaan yan. I myself, matagal din bago ako nakaipon ng, ng, ano ko, ng emergency fund ko. This is not really... Uh, I'm not really a finance pr- professional, a personal pi- finance professional, but this is something na a lot of finance professionals would tell you. Kailangan magkaroon ka ng buffer. No? Or emer- tawag nila emergency funds. At least, sabi nila, three months. I would say at least six months. Kung kaya nyo one year, go for it. Tapos dahan-dahan ninyo and put it something na, uh, somewhere na hindi nyo gagalawin basta-basta. Like a passbook uh, bank account na may hirap ka mag-withdraw no? ng basta-basta. Ilagay nyo doon. Tapos be disciplined. Again, wag nyo nang antagin mangyari yung mangyayari. Yung mabulaga kayo na ito, recession na, nagkaroon ng layoffs, tapos kasama ka, tapos wala kang pera. You have no emergency funds. Nakakatakot yun. I can't, moving, uh, looking back now, I can't really imagine myself having no job tapos wala pa akong pera. No. I mean, I'm privileged enough so that I could come back to, go back to my parents, you know. They would sus- uh, sustain me. But I don't want to do that. Ayokong laging umaasa sa ganun. So, Kahit ano man estado mo sa buhay ngayon, stop making excuses. Bawasan niyo yung mga gastos niyo, yung mga hindi kailangan at simulan niyo na mag ano, please, simulan niyo na mag-ipon. Nakakatakot talaga. I mean, I I I told I told you earlier, baka hindi mangyari sa Pilipinas, ma- ma- malabo mangyari, but there's still a chance na mangyari siya. No. And I don't want you guys 
na ma-push sa brink na maging desperado kayo. Kasi do, in desperate times, doon nangyayari yung mga bagay na ayaw natin mangyari or mga ayaw natin, doon natin ginagawa yung mga bagay na ayaw natin gawin. Mapipilitan ka talaga. And I don't want you guys to to do that. No? Umabot pa kayo sa ganong estado sa buhay. So yun, um, for people naman sa mga ano, more, alis tayo sa finance talk. Hindi ko naman talaga forte yan. <laughs> Although kung gusto nyo, pwede naman, di ba? Sabihan na lang ako. But, let's talk about career shifters. Ito, madalas na tanong din. Mas mahirap ba ngayon makalipat sa tech? I would say yes. Oo. Medyo nagihigpit din ng sinturon niya mga companies. Like my current company. Uh, Pilano namin sana na mag-hire this year. But with the looming recession, medyo nag-back off muna kami. Hindi muna. Uh, although open pa rin, but not really. Hindi kami magiging aggressive in hiring uh, new engineers. So, ang napag-usapan namin is to protect muna yung current engineers. Na if ever recession hits, oh, okay lang. Kakayanin pa rin namin. Na hindi kailangan magtanggal ng tao. Kasi pagka nag-hire kami, baka, syempre, nahati na yung, yung budget, may matatanggal talaga. And we don't want that happening. So, medyo mahirap nga. Mahirap na makapasok ngayon sa industry. And may nagtanong nga sa akin, I forgot, I think it's Archie. Archie. Uh, na makakalaban ba namin yung mga natanggal sa trabaho? As a career shifter, kasama ba sila sa mga magiging kaagaw namin sa entry-level positions? I would say no. Because, again, nabanggit ko na most of these people are, ano na, um, subok na yung mga yan. Mga seniors, mga mid-level, a few juniors, pero may mga experience na kasi natanggal na sila. Eh, di ba? Natanggal na sila sa previous job nila. Eh. May, may, may ano na sila. They have the experience na. So, they aren't really entry-level. So, yung mga mga kalaban nyo pa rin sa entry-level positions, ay kayo-kayo pa rin. Mga career shifters and mga fresh graduates. But not really mid-le- mid-level seniors. No, I- ibang, iba yung playing field nila. So, don't worry about that. But yun nga, ang malaking factor talaga is yung economic standing ng isang company. Lalo na ngayon, na nagigipit talaga ng sinturon ng mga companies. Pero Kuya Dev, paano na? So, may hirapan pala. Is it still worth my effort to try to apply to jobs? Okay pa ba tong ginagawa ko? Nag-aaral ako mag-code? Nag-aaral ako mag-design? Is it still worth it? Yes. It will still be worth it because that's a skill. Even if you don't end up in the tech industry, recession or no recession, you no. Know, that's a skill na na-acquire mo na, na-build mo na. And you can use that. Yun palang thinking logically and problem solving, that's a very valuable skill. You know? Coding is just a manifestation of your problem solving skills. Eh? It's just a way to express. or It's just a tool. Pero behind that, yung pinakamahalagang skill na bubuo mo is yung problem solving and critical thinking. So, even if you don't end up in the tech industry, you have that skill na. It, it, it will not go away. Andyan na yan. Ah, sa'yo na lang kung ibibuild mo pa. And in terms of getting into the tech industry, just temper your expectations. Kung naiisip nyo, kaya nyo in 3 months, sabihin natin, kaya nyo ngayon in 6 months. Hahaba. Mas, mas magiging mahirap. I'm not sugarcoating this. Hindi ko talaga sugarcoat yan. Mas magiging mahirap talaga. But, I would still suggest na tsagain nyo lang. Tsagain nyo lang. Kasi, 
even if the recession hits, lilipas din yan. Economies kasi, they run in cycles eh. Taas baba yan. Sometimes nasa taas tayo, sometimes nasa baba. Ito, malapit tayo sa baba. But it will pass. So, habang hindi pa kayo na-hire, ipilid nyo lang yung, ano nyo, yung skills nyo. And eventually, mag-normalize yan eh. Eventually, babalik ang economy. You know? Sana, dapat lang. <laughs> Kasi, basta, dapat lang, bumalik ang economy. And it will, it will. Uh, if history uh, tells us something, if the economy comes down, it eventually comes back. No? Comes back up. And while the economy is down, build your, 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 your skills. And if it goes back up, kasama ka ron. Kasama kang ano. Ayan na. Biglang magdadagsaan na yung, yung, yung demand. Lalaki ulit yung demand. Andong ka na. You're ready. No? Hindi ka na katulad nung iba na kung kailan andyan yung demand, doon pa lang sila mag-aaral. No? Unahan mo na. Unahan mo na yung demand. Pagka nag-pick up na yung demand, andong ka, ready ka na, andito ko. Kunin nyo na ako. I hope that's clear. And same goes for fresh grads. Same, same principle. I refer to no, um, job seekers as uh, no, competition among, amongst each, each other. It's uh, Yeah, it is, but sa tech industry, lalo na pagka bumalik yung demand, halos wala nga na eh. Uh, sa entry level lang talaga saturated eh. Pero it's not really, no? If you find a way to, stack, to, to really stand out, you'll be in a good position. So, ngayon pa lang talaga, don't give up. Huwag ka, huwag, matakot kayo, oh, sige, nakakatakot naman talaga. But know that these two shall pass. Lilipas din to. So, while the bad times is ongoing, no, keep on building your skills. Para pagka when the good times come, happy-happy tayong lahat. Thank you and I'll see you next episode. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast. I hope it will be helpful to you in your tech career journey. Remember, building a successful career in tech takes time and dedication. But with the right mindset and resources, anything is possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and colleagues. And if you have comments, suggestions, or any questions or topics you'd like to hear more about, feel free to email me at rem at kuya.dev. I'd also love to hear your own stories and experiences. So don't be shy, reach out and share them with me. I'm always here to support you in your tech journey. Do also join our community, Tech Career Shifter Philippines at www.techcareershifter.com. Until next time, keep learning, growing, and chasing your dreams. Thank you again for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode.